How's everyone? Thanks for coming out. Um, I want to start off like this. I want you guys to picture this with me. Uh, I'm in Japan um, at an Asian Olympic qualifying event. And I'm about to go into my final match. Uh, and this, this final match is going to determine whether I'm going to be competing in the Olympic Games or whether I'm going to go back home and watch it from TV. So this final match is going to be against a guy from Thailand. And I'm so nervous. I'm just, I'm like this, you know? I'm, lo I'm looking around and I'm sweating like this. And the only thing that's keeping me calm right now is, is Taylor Swift. I'm jamming at Taylor Swift. <laughs> so, so, you know, this match, people ask me, they're like, how do you do this? How do you go, how do you have the courage to go to an Olympic qualifying event and compete in the final match? and the score is tied up, and you got to make the last point. How do, you ha how do you do that? How do you win? And I just tell them, I'm like, you know, it's not easy. But through life, I've learned, you know, through my life experience, I've learned a life attribute. And that attribute is resiliency. And so in this do or die competition, it was, it's basically like this. You know, I didn't know if I was going to win. I didn't know if I was going to lose. And that's kind of like how we live our lives every day. We don't know what's going to happen next. We don't know what's going to happen you know, tomorrow or the next minute. We just don't know. So that being said, I uh, ended up just beating the guy. And I was so happy. And so um, I, want, I want you guys to follow this quote with me. And I think it's something that we can all, um, we all like share in common. And this quote goes like this. It's like, Life is so unpredictable, and we can spend our whole life planning and planning and planning and never have anything ever go according to plan. So that being said, I want to take you guys back on a small timeline of mine and go back 10 years ago into my life. Um, I was 13 years old, and I was a hockey player. I was planning on becoming the next Wayne Gretzky, wanted to play in the NHL, and you know, hockey was my life. And um, some unexpected events um, kind of changed the course of my life. Um, 13 years old, um, I was sitting at the dinner table with my mom, my family, my dad, just everyone eating and having a good time. And my mom gets a phone call. <clears throat> and uh, she just realizes that her oldest son, my oldest brother, was killed in a motorcycle accident at 21 years old. <clears throat> so uh, you know, 13 years old, and that happens to you. you. You're a kid, but you still understand death. You understand you know, what's going on. And I'm sitting there, and I'm holding my mom's hand, and I'm looking at her in the eyes, and she just lost her child and my brother. So I, I can't describe completely what that feels like. I, I know the feeling of losing a, a sibling, but I don't know the feeling my mom experienced as losing a child. Um, so you know, me, my brother, Brandon, uh, we had this typical bro-to-bro -bro relationship, and uh, he would always come watch me play hockey. We did everything um, athletically together, and um, it was at a hockey camp the last time I ever saw him again. So um, this association between hockey and, um, and my brother was really strong. And uh, you know, when you lose someone so close to you, it's so easy to lose motivation for something that you love, like currently, presently something that you love doing, you just you don't feel like doing it anymore. So a year later after that, I, um, I broke my arm playing hockey. And that led me to fencing. That led me to trying fencing with my sisters. It was kind of like a rehab process. And you know, I couldn't just go out there and start checking people back in the boards. You know, I had to you know, take it slow. So I ended up you know, falling in love with you know, the whole individual aspect of fencing. And uh, it was kind of like a fresh start for me. Uh, you know, I think that's just something that I needed. I was, I just, I was, I was over, like, I was over hockey, you know? I was just, I was ready to start something new. And so I broke my arm and started hockey. Um, I'm sorry, I broke my arm, started fencing. Um, and, but life was like, hey, you got another thing coming. So, you know, I wasn't even supposed to be a Buckeye, OSU. I wasn't supposed to be here talking to you. 
I, um, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, and um, you know, that's where my family is, that's where my friends are, that's, what, that's where you know, a girl um, that I really loved at the time lived, and that was just my comfort zone. I was training for the Olympics there with my original coach, and just everything was just in Dallas for me. Like, that was my, where my heart was. So one day, I get a phone call from the head coach here at Ohio State, Vladimir Nazimov, and he's like, hey, are you interested in competing in NCAA for Ohio State? Going to give you a full scholarship. And my first answer is like, no, sorry. I, sorry, coach, thank you for the offer, but um, my comfort zone is here, and I feel comfortable here, and, but thank you. And so later on that night, I had a, you know, even further discussion with my family, and we surveyed the options of you know, the pros and cons, and the cons were definitely like, you know, I knew the reasons why I didn't want to leave, and, but the pros were, you know, there were actually some good pros. Like, I could come here, get a new life experience, um, you know, experience, you know, just being an adult and just, you know, experiencing change. So I came here, um, met, you know, wonderful teammates, friends, um, accomplished a lot academically, athletically, and met an even more amazing girl that happened to be a student athlete also, and just everything has been working out good ever since then. So this next thing I want to talk about is people ask me, why Lebanon and not the United States? Why? You, you're so good. You know, you kick everyone's butt and shouldn't you be a US Olympian? And I'm like, yeah, but there's, there's more to it than just that. You know, when you're an NCAA athlete, you have to make a decision between, you know, are you going to compete in NCAA or are you going to train for the Olympics? So 2012 was well, the year before, 2011, 2012, I had to make a decision of, am I going to stay NCAA or am I going to train for the Olympics and compete internationally? And when you compete internationally, you pretty much live overseas. So you have to take off from school, which is why you see a lot of athletes taking off from school and they just live overseas. But I didn't want to do that. Our, you know, our strong chance to win as a team was 2012. And I just... I, wanted, I don't know, I just wanted to help my team. I wanted to be part of that. I wanted to have that in my college career. I wanted to have the NCAA title. And, you know, I had the humbling experience, and we won. And I ended up winning individually, and we won as a team collectively. So that was awesome. But, you know, that wasn't enough. Like, I remember it's, it's post-NCAAs, and I'm sitting on my couch, and... I'm eating pizza, ice cream, typical Olympian diet, and watching Family Guy, typical Olympian show. And um, I'm sitting like a couch potato, and, and an Olympic commercial comes on. And I get kind of like, not sad, but you know, I get this like eerie feeling like, what am I doing? Like, I should be training or something. I should be going to that, I should be competing in Olympic Games. So as soon as I saw the commercial, an idea came to mind. And I was like, okay, my, you know, I can't compete as a U.S. Olympian, you know, one of my dreams, but I still have a chance to compete and be an Olympian. So what did I do? I was like, I was Googling my options, like, what, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And so I have dual citizenship, and my father's Lebanese, and um, I can jump on, a plane all the, uh, jump on a plane all the way to Japan and do that do or die competition and qualify. And I did. So next thing I know, I find myself uh, in the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, and I'm coming out like, you know, coming out like this, and like, you know, you know, and I'm just in, in awe of like thousands of like camera flashes, and it's just, you know, I look at my one of my teammates, and I'm like, yo, dog, this is amazing, yeah, <laughs> and he's like, huh, and I'm like, this is amazing, dog, and I I, I forget that he speaks French, not English, so, <laughs> so I'm like. C'est phenomenal, oui? And I was like, this is phenomenal, yeah? He's like, oui, 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 oui. I'm like, okay, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, kept on walking and just taking in all the experience. And I looked to my right and I was like, whoa, it's Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, and Kevin Durantula. Oh. And so, and, they, and they're sticking out their fists to me, like, they want to fist bump me. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know? So, I'm fist bumping with the superstars, and it's that, that one moment that I was like, okay, these guys are superstars. I'm no superstar, but I feel something very mutual with them, and that is that we are all Olympians. 
we came for the same purpose, and that was to compete in Olympic Games. So that was one of the great moments in my life. So, uh, short story. So everyone knows uh, Michael Phelps, right? Yeah, greatest Olympian of all time. Um, so I had an interesting interaction with him. I uh, was walking in the dinner line one night, and walking, 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 and then it's Phelps. And I'm like, oh, greatest Olympian of all time. <laughs> and, but I'm tired, and he looks tired, and I probably, if I say hello, he probably won't say anything back. So I don't want to get denied, so I just don't say anything at all. So I get there, and we go to this dinner line, and the only one that's open, and it's like the, they call it the, the, the juicy chicken line. So I wanted this juicy chicken. So I get there, and it's just me and Phelps, and I see these two big pieces of chicken in front of me. And I'm like, OK, one for Phelps, one for me. Next thing I know, Mr. Phelps takes off with both pieces of chicken. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'm left with just macaroni and cheese. So that is my experience with Phelps. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so now the, the big thing. So why, why I came to the Olympics to compete. Uh, how did I do? Well, I got my butt kicked, got railed. Um, so I fenced the number one Chinese athlete. Uh, unfortunately, my, going into the competition, my, my ranking was very low. His was very high because I didn't travel at all. I just went to a, a lucky Japan tournament and won, and I didn't get any ranking. So naturally, got my butt kicked. Uh, but all these things that I just told you, you know, my brother passing away, you know, looking my mom in the eyes, of her losing a child, um, you know, moving away from my family and not seeing my sisters grow up. Got five sisters, six sisters, you know? So, yeah, no. <laughs> I know. I think this is a funny thing. I don't think I've ever taken a hot shower until I came to Ohio State. <laughs> so, so, throwing that out there. So, all these things, and, oh, and then Phelps taking my chicken. What did this all do for me? <laughs> this taught me, you know, resiliency. You know, this taught me, yeah, resiliency. And what I want you guys to take from my talk today, I want you guys to accept the fact that life is so unpredictable. And, you know, sometimes it can just, I'm literally beat you to your knees. And it can keep you, th it can keep you there if you let it. But I want you guys, if that happens to you, I want you guys to get up. Um, like my Russian coach says, he's just like, he's like, grab your spine and just do it, you know, just go. So. Yeah. So I want you guys to grab what's inside you, grab your spine, and just do it, okay? So, um, yeah, and I also, you know, there's a really great quote from a um, famous movie, Rocky. We all know this movie. And it goes like this. It goes, nothing is going to hit as hard as life, but it's not about how hard you can hit, but how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. So. You know, these life experiences and the adversities in our life, um, you know, these are the building blocks of resiliency. And um, my path to resiliency has led me to something as incredible and amazing as the Olympic Games in London. And so I want to ask you guys, what is resiliency going to lead you guys towards? And I hope it's something great. And uh, God bless you guys. It was a pleasure. And go Bucks.